Captain's Log, subdate 20409.9. We are now passing through the Bering Strait. The waters are oddly calm, but there's a weird sound emanating from the former Akkad Kingdom. It sounds like a re. I've programmed the sensors to block it out, and we have sent word to Subfleet to order an exterminatus on the area. Welcome everyone to the 31st exhibition of Stupid People. Before we dive into the, let's see, five subjects I have planned for today, although two do merge into one-ish. So four, let's go with four. There's a new video on Moiski Live. I am going to be streaming on Twitch later tonight. I'm also playing D&D &D on the channel linked below called Skog. If you're interested in any of that, check it all out. So first, let's go to the Ebola going around. I mean, COVID-19, since we're allowed to actually say coronavirus provided it's not fake news, which I'll get on to later. For this, we're going to go to a pub in Nottinghamshire, where this particular pub, in its infinite wisdom, decided to serve drinks. The pub is called the Bluebell, by the way to serve these drinks in what they called a lock-in for regular drinkers. Right. There are a lot of people who were found here at this lock-in. Here's a picture of it. Great. Classy area, as you can clearly tell. So what has the police done since then? Well, they shut it down because reports did come through. Yes, grasses do exist because they're for your own safety in this context. Don't try and harm them. The consequence includes that the police shut the pub down along with removing all stock, which includes all the alcohol, from the premises, which I find to be interesting, because part of me did believe perhaps the police kept it and decided, well, if they're not going to use it. <laughs> it's an expensive way to get shut down, by the way. It's not like you can claim that back on insurance. You're a genius. Chief Superintendent Rob Griffin has said that this sends a very clear message that the police and our partners will not tolerate those people who deliberately break the rules and put other people's lives in danger. Understandably, many people, including councillors for the area, have dubbed the bar manager irresponsible, and that drinking with even one friend goes against government guidelines. At a time when the vast majority of residents are having to obey government advice, there is always going to be a small majority that think the rules don't apply to them, so sadly, rules have to be enforced, but this leads on to something that happened since, where the government has introduced legislation called the Health Protection or Coronavirus Restrictions England Regulations 2020 Act. This went through everything and didn't go through Parliament for even a second. In fact, it went straight through and got signed. By definition, it is the most undemocratic thing to ever happen, but I know why it happened because people continue to flout the rules. I don't like that this has to exist, and hope it is abolished the moment we are allowed to go out safely. But until then, I can see the government issuing more of this nonsense, because people keep on ignoring the advice. To the Bluebell, you are idiots. So next we should continue with the subject of the coronavirus, but now talk about the boomers, and how this has impacted the boomers at a time of crisis. Well, the boomers have been put in a rather odd spot, but that's okay. When this is all done, dusted, toasted over, and they can get on with their boomer lives being boomers and doing boomer things, the boomers can go and do what the boomers like to do the most. That's right. Go on a cruise! Yes. They're all planning ahead, you see, and bookings are up by 10% from last year. Now, that's understandable, because no one can go on their holidays this year. My sisters themselves were going camping. They've cancelled that, which was lucky because they needed the money to help me pay for the dog surgery. Yes, fortunate. The thing that strikes me as interesting about this is that we have yet to hit that plateau with regards to the spread and, of course, effect this virus is having on people. So planning ahead seems a bit naive. But also they have to take into account an additional problem. And that is, while they're planning their cruises, they haven't considered the fact that many of these companies that run those cruises are going to go under. Oops. Can you get your deposit back on that? Or does one really have to go on a cruise that badly they'd settle for an outboard motor on a rowing boat? And that motor on the rowing boat is just a man going... <laughs> while his mouth is dipped under water. That sound effect, by the way, is 100% authentic, and you are all welcome. The part that really strikes me as most interesting above all of that, though, 
is the most popular destination the boomers really want to go to on their cruise? Take a wild guess, and chances are you are correct. I just can't imagine why. They all just can't help but get themselves on board with some bat soup. Next. So next we should probably talk about who the biggest joke on the planet is at the moment. Is it China? Is it the UN? Is it the WHO or World Health Organization? Is it the BBC? Is it the CDC? Is it Donald Trump, Bernie Sanders, Boris Johnson? No, it, it's just the UN. They are the biggest joke on the planet. The entire point of the UN is to promote globalization and cooperation. And yet on a regular basis, people ignore what happens within it to do whatever they want because it suits them. Great example would be the UK ignoring the veto from Russia to not attack a Syrian, air quote this, weapons cash. There was nothing there. Well done. But an even better one is the fact the UN had Saudi Arabia chair the Human Rights Council. Right. Well, guess who they've had now join the Human Rights Panel to pick experts on free speech, health, arbitrary detention, and more? You're right. It's the second biggest joke on the planet. China. Something tells me the UN, they're not quite down with the people. Much like the World Health Organization that have been pandering to China on a regular basis, the UN are doing exactly the same to make them feel better about the colossal mistake they've made. Let's ignore the fact that China, in their infinite wisdom, have had street parades in Wuhan to celebrate quite loudly that they've defeated the coronavirus. Right. Optics aside, are you sure you want to be celebrating so loud and proud when the rest of us are suffering? I guess when you only really think about yourself, while simultaneously and unironically operating on a global stage, nothing else really matters now, does it? Now, China was appointed on Wednesday to this council panel, and they're going to play a key role in picking World Body's human rights investigators, who will include global monitors on freedom of speech, health, enforced disappearances, and arbitrary detention, which understandably has annoyed pretty much every international human rights activist on the planet. Shall we also ignore the fact that the UN's biodiversity chief advised that China ban wildlife markets to avert these pandemics? But what has China done since? You're right! They've reopened the wet markets. You know, the ones where they sell live animals, keeping them in cages, allowing disease to fester because they're not properly cleaned. Because apparently China still operates under a system that is more antiquated than the United Kingdom's back in the 1800s, though. The word genius is just everywhere. I can't imagine why. The UN is the punchline to a number of jokes. Much like the World Health Organization that have been schmoozing with China and commending them for tackling COVID-19, while simultaneously saying there is no cure for it. Nice. Next. I guess now would be a good time to look at the updated rules from YouTube on how one can get monetized when constantly referencing COVID-19. Especially when you take into account that I shaded the World Health Organization in the last bit of stupid. And there's a good reason for that, because they actually feature in the best practices for creating content about COVID-19 where one is solely responsible for fact-checking their content, which I think is right, by using reputable sources from organizations such as the NHS, the CDC, and the World Health Organization to inform your content for official resources that are relevant to your country, region, you are given an additional link. You must also be sensitive to the fact that this is an ongoing global crisis, and we ask that if you choose to share COVID-19 related content, that you do so with the best intentions in mind. Well, here's my intention. To point at the WHO, since they have done everything to look like utter muppets, and say you are utter muppets. And YouTube, you shouldn't be referencing the WHO as a reputable source, because they are busy schmoozing with the very people who are acting as if they did nothing wrong, i.e. the Chinese government. I find that to be incredibly insulting to the rest of the world. Their sources, by the way, for the most part, have already been proven wrong. And when it comes to informing people, they're better at spreading, let's say, fake news than they are fact. With that in mind, we should also address what YouTube is doing to tighten the rules around 
other types of content that spread, let's say, conspiracy theories? Because YouTube has tightened the rules on that after a David Icke 5G interview. Google is now deleting videos that violate this new policy, which originally limited itself to reducing the frequency that these videos recommended cropped up in the up next section. During an interview, David Icke claimed there is a link between 5G and the health crisis. And when asked for his reaction to reports of 5G masts being set on fire in England, he responded that if 5G continues and reaches where they want to take it, human life as we know it is over. So people may have to come to a decision. He also claimed that the coronavirus vaccine, when one is developed, will include nanotechnology microchips that will allow humans to be controlled, with him adding that Bill Gates, who is helping fund the vaccine research, should be jailed. While YouTube are stupid for promoting the WHO, David Icke is also quite precious, and with David Icke in mind, I want to talk about others that are promoting this. Amir Khan, Mr Glassjaw, who on one hand was promoting isolation and distancing, simultaneously having a birthday party with five of his friends at his house, which looks more like an office block behind a bungalow. Mr. Glassjaw has been also promoting this idea of nanotechnology and, of course, the mark of the beast and, of course, mind-controlling 5G-related nonsense. Amir, I think you've taken far too many shots to the head. You had a chance to be a great boxer and a legend, in fact, but you spent all your time obsessing over Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather. And every time you actually stepped up against any opponent, you got knocked out. Your best fight was a weight-drained Marcus Maidana, and you couldn't stop him. But he nearly stopped you. As with all the stupid I cover on this channel, I'm very much interested to know what you think was the dumbest. Please do let me know in the comments down below. I hope you all have a fantastic X plus whatever many days in quarantine, and thank you all for listening.